Doug Young, striker, three, four years. When did you first realise you was awesome at football? I was never awesome. I was average. Um, never realised. Just enjoyed playing football. Everything else was a bonus. Brilliant. Uh, what was the team you followed and did you have a kind of kit that you wore on as a kid? The first shirt I ever got was Brentwood Town. Now they played in the Southern League down at the Hive in Brentwood. With a number nine on the back for Jackie Meager, who was my hero. Really? Where did you hone your skills as a kid? Uh, in the back garden, uh, on the concrete, and my boots with wooden studs in. Uh, that's where I learned everything, out in the back garden. How did you get to play for Billericay? I was fortunate enough that John Newman asked me to come over and play for the club. It was an honour just to be asked and it was just from there everything was just okay and brilliant. Had you heard, what had you heard about Ricky before you came here? Uh, it's not what I heard, it's what everybody knew, that how good the club was, the support, everything about the way it was run and it's a team that was good. They all, whenever I played against them they always beat us. So you just knew that they was good. So what was the, what's your memories of the ground? It like dressing rooms and pitch and what have you? Mud, shackle. Um, it's just the way pitches were in them days. The only time there'd be grass on it be the first week of the season. And after that, it's gone. Loved a mud bath. I was able to tackle in them days. <laughs> uh, where were you living when you... Did you, did you have a career around this area? Uh, I lived in Hutton. I worked in Hutton. I was a loom operator. That was it really, stitching trampoline beds. How did you get to the ground? Uh, drove in them days. I was able to drive. How did you manage the work football balance? Uh, there's no problem in them days. It was eight till four, half four. So... It was easy. Do you remember any... Did you ever get paid to play on... Do you remember the amounts? Uh, what we did get paid in them days, five, ten pound, whatever it was, just went straight back over the bar. So that was it, really. It was a pleasure to play for nothing. Anything else was a bonus. So rivalry, who, who, were the, who was the team you had to raise your game to and you had to beat because they were your rivals? In those days we was in the Athenian League, so it was mostly Greys, Wingate, Leighton, Edgware. There was all hard games, but we had a good side, coped well and won everything. Right, typical match day, how did you, how did you prepare and how did you get to the ground? And did, you get, did you think, oh right, it's a match day, I'm going to have loads of pasta or meat or... Just eat what you like. Nah, pasta. Never heard of it in them days, was it? That's for the Italians. Uh, no, we just normal up breakfast, play with the kids, drove to the ground. Always got here early, and our team talked and just went on done our business. Yeah, any any kind of league match that stands out for you, quite aside from the, the past runs. Is there any match that you're particularly happy with? Or the one game which was the best game that I th that meant a lot to me was when we beat Wall from Stowe Avenue in the FA Cup 3-1. Uh, I was winged on non-league football. I think I had a trial at Wall from Stowe when I was 15. And my father said I couldn't sign for him because they swore too much. But uh, that meant a lot to me. F nearly 3,000 people here. Managed to score a goal as well. So it was a, a great day, meant a lot. Yeah, I remember when we was, one of the matches you were talking about, you clipping your ankles and, and what have you, with, with your, your hips, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so what have you asked the other players, is like, did you keep re relatively uninjured? So you talk us through that. Um, well, it started off a, it's something I was born with, displacer of the hips, like Tramdellenberg deficiency, it's called. I used to run, I used to kick myself, my right foot would kick my left ankle. 
Um, but I had a few injuries, got done in a senior cup final uh, deliberately and ripped my ligaments. And next day we played the gold diggers when I had Elton John down here and a few others, so I missed all that. Uh, done my knee ligaments once as well. But other than that, everything was fine. Uh, you, had, you had trials for Spurs? I had a game for Spurs, yeah, played Norwegian national youth side. They managed to score, thought I'd done alright, but Peter Shreves weren't impressed. So that was it really, but it was a good day, great experience. In the evening Spurs played Arsenal and Pat Rice's testimonial. So I was on the Spurs coach on the way to the ground, waving all the crowd. I really enjoyed myself. There's all going, who's that with Peter Taylor, but... Do you have any superstitions? No, none whatsoever. Talk me through the banter between players. Uh, there's always a lot of stick flying about. There's a lot of good characters, but in them days, everyone had something to say. There's no shrinking violets. It was nothing untoward, just a laugh, really, from the moment you got to training till we left the bar after training and after the game. Um. Any influential players that you had utmost respect for? Uh, the main one would be like everyone else, Steve Bone. Uh, there's a story that not many people here know that after we got beaten by Barton Rovers in the bars, uh, we'd all had a good drink. We was back here probably about one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning and I was crying my eyes out because I thought that was it. That was my chance of Wembley gone. And Boney come up to me Pat me on the shoulder, he said, Youngy, I can assure you, I'll make sure you get there next season. And true to his word, we got there. The man was enormous. Greatest respect for him. And also, I'd like to say, Paul Blackalla, John Newman, for making me the footballer I was, Arthur Coughlin, for the person he is, and the rest of my teammates, just a pleasure. Yeah, Jeff. Tell me about Jeff's playing style. As he, he's a lump, wasn't he? Yeah, very hard, good player. Knock the ball up to, bring it down, bring other people into the game. Lacked pace, but it didn't matter because he could score goals with his head, knock a 30 yarder in. I didn't play with him that much, but when I got injured in the cup final, Jeff came in for me and he scored a hat trick and won the league against Saxbridge, I think it was. Out in the pouring rain, so good player to have. What about JP? JP, brilliant. Reliable, dependable. Scored a goal every 400 games. He was just different class, really. Arthur? Arthur, what can you say about a legend? The man's a gentleman. A pleasure to know. Pleasure to play with. He was just uh, exceptional. It says everything about the club, the person. And Freddie. Freddie, great striker, great player, created things for other people, worked hard, and just a pleasure to play with. He just always scored goals, you know, he'd be dependable. you remember any of the matches running up to the 79 final? Um, a couple of games I've been injured. I had a bad ankle, so I missed a couple of games. But um, no, it's, it's just touch and go whether I play. Fortunately, got over it. And I was fortunate enough to make it at Wembley. I was a little scared that I wouldn't make it, so I was more than happy that I could. So, final day, can you remember between waking up and getting to the ground anything? Um, Final day, just, it wasn't as much a blur, it's just surreal, basically. Uh, waking up, me and Paul Blackalla room together, come down for breakfast, and Colin Sell said, uh, I asked everyone if they slept well. And Freddie Klein and Paul Scott said no. He said, we had a couple of giggling school kids in the room next door. It's just me and Blackie just couldn't believe what was going on, going to Wembley. It's just amazing. You also said something about your boots and the coach. 
yeah, I didn't have a pair of boots at Wembley till about half past two. Um, obviously, the other players had been there and knew what the ground was like. And you had to wear a long stud and the, my boots were just worn out. The toes had gone, the studs were worn down. So I um, had three or four of them working on my boots to put new studs in for me. But I just sat there and waved at everyone going to the game. I was quite lucky, really. So what was it like stepping out of the pitch? Shivers down your spine. Amazing. Obviously, the players that have been there before told us that when you get there, touch everything, go everywhere, because the following week was a cup final. Whilst the Man United didn't say, I was there, I've done that, I've done this. And it's just Wembley in them days. just meant so much. Right, yeah, this is, this is about the match now, Doug. And I know you, I know you know the, the times you scored, but can you just run me through the match? Uh, the match, uh, do you want just the goals or... There's just so much in it. Everything, fortunately, for me, worked well. And for the team, we was amazing. We played some good football. We literally played them off the park. And it's just a pleasure to play. And, and to do it at Wembley was even more exceptional. Uh, the first goal was Dave Groom breaking down the left. Knocked it to the far post. Freddie headed it back. I got in front of the keeper and knocked it in. I remember just running around like a headless chicken, jumping into Billy Bingham's arms, shouting, I scored at Wembley. That's what it meant. And then the second goal was a free kick we rehearsed every week. And it worked so well, me running out of the way, Scotty knocked the ball into Freddie, and Freddie just clinical. It just so pleasing. All that hard work to do it at Wembley was exceptional. Uh, the third goal, fortunately, Phil Wettel corner, Jamie Reeves headed it on the line, just hit it on the volley over my shoulder in the corner. And then the fourth one was their corner, Billy Bingham broke it up, knocked it to Freddie, Freddie knocked it through to me, and I just hit it first time on the outside of my right foot. Chipped the keeper from, it's about 80 yards, I think it was. Or it is now, anyway. <laughs> and then after that was just a procession. We had other chances, Scotty, Groomy, Freddie, myself. It was just exceptional. Someone asked me, I said to some people, some, let's have some questions what you asked. And someone said, was the free kick against Arms with Greenway, was it planned chaos? Yeah, yeah, as I said, yeah, because it works that I ran to the near post, taking defenders with me, and then first time we don't do it, we make it look as though we mucked it up. So I come back in, do the same thing, took more defenders away, just for Scotty to knock it through to Freddie to finish with ease. But yeah, hard work on the training ground, even in them days. 40 years ago now, it's what we used to do. The club was so far ahead, I think, in thinking and planning things. So final whistle, what happens with you? What are the emotions? I can't really remember after the game, trying to look for my dad in the crowd. Uh, just joy, basic joy. Actually done it, won at Wembley. Just happy for everyone, the fans, the management, the players, everyone who's involved. It was just sheer joy. Can you remember the presentation? Uh, yeah, yeah, 39 steps there are up to Wembley in them days to collect the trophy. I was up last, got me medal, and then I'm um, giving it the big one, waving it to everyone, and slipped over on the concrete steps. Captured on film, yeah, that was it. But yeah, Ron Greenwood had polite words to say. Said something back to him. It was, yeah, it's nice. Was there a party in the dressing room? There's a party still going on now, I think. It was, uh, yeah, a few bottles of beer, everything. It just didn't stop all the way back. Carried on through the night. 
got to do it once in a lifetime thing. Other players fortunate to do it three times, but you know it's yeah. Yes, and bus. Yep, we got back here on a Sunday morning. Everyone had a bad head, and everyone had the same shirt, tie on, trousers, jacket, except for Billy Bingham. Is a bin the cleaners have been all pressed. Everybody else has got beer stains. Easy immaculate. Uh, we were on the bus, and I was being interviewed by Doug Remfrey for a tape he was doing, and for Basil in the hospitals. And as we turn left out of the club, there's a big tree hanging over it, him on the back of the head. So that was a good start on the way round, but other than that, High Street, all the way up, people, fantastic. Any souvenirs from the day, and where are they? Um, got my shirt, shorts, I gave my socks to Ricky McQueen. I've still got the top, warm-up top with war at Wembley. I put it on the other day, it still fits, which is the summit. That's the only thing that's fit about me now. But um, I've got a couple of rosettes and there's a banner that uh, a couple of our supporters had that said, uh, Doug drops them in the net for quicker than Sammy Nelson because he scored for Arsenal then dropped his shorts down to the photographer. So it's in the shape of a pair of shorts, I've still got that. Uh, that's about it, really. Uh, what happened to the match for? Who knows? No idea where it went. Um, I was given the ball after the game, and Stevie Bones said that, you know, the club normally has the ball. So I gave it to the club, and it just disappeared. What do you think of the Ricky fans? Amazing. Immense. Just all the way through my career that I had here and coming back and supporting, still seeing people like Ron and Joyce Signs, Derek Hanks, people like loads of people were involved with the club before I came here. Even the supporters now, it's, it's just brilliant. This club's always been that way. Always back you 100%. If it's not going right, they'll always still be there. Just tremendous. What's your most prized memory? Prized memory? Everything. All of it. I remember games and how they went and things like that, people in the crowd. It was just everything about this club is a memory that will never leave. Because Bill is ingrained in you. You spoke to Jeff, John, you're going to speak Freddie, Arthur, John. They're just Everything about them, this club, it means a lot. In 100 years' time, how do you want to be remembered? For being me, um, other than that, just to be part of it. This club has always been a team. It's never been about one individual. The team is immense. That is, that is it. It's Bill Ricky, not an individual.